Today, we're going to be going over the best PC settings. I'm sure you're tired of crappy quality, FPS, and even inconsistent aim, so I'm here to help. This can also be used for console. On top of it, there's some new and improved MW2 settings that you're going to want to have on. If this video helps, make sure to like and subscribe. Display mode, full screen, that is a must. Display monitor, make sure obviously it's in the right monitor. Screen refresh rate, make sure it's on the hertz that you have your monitor on. Display resolution, obviously, again, make sure it's correct. Dynamic resolution, off aspect ratio automatic this is a big one v-sync gameplay you want to have this setting off it's going to drain your fps for the brightness this is different for everyone but make sure you're setting up your brightness depending on what it's saying on your screen now for the big boy the quality you want to have to put this on custom render resolution on 100 and obviously make sure it's on the right resolution for your monitor make sure you have fidelity cast on this is going to make an insane difference the game looks incredible with this on and put this on 100 it will drain a little fps but it's worth it anti-aliasing make sure it's on filmic smma 2 ttx i have this setting on low and i have this video memory scale on default 85 i don't like to mess around with this stuff this can cause crashes and even lag texture resolution low texture filter low a lot of these settings are going to be low low so you gain more fps and more performance we're going to have this on short particle quality low very low uh bullets impact this raise this barely barely affects fps maybe by a couple i had this on because it looks cool you can kind of see the bullets you can kind of see the shots you can have this off if you like but uh you know why not uh shader quality low uh shader optimization this is something you can obviously do in beginning of games if you're especially if you're, you're experiencing some lag tessellation off this will drain your fps make sure you have the setting off uh terrain memory minimum on demand texture streaming off this is another setting that can cause crashes or can make your game lag streaming quality i guess is uh, set on default normal volumetric quality low again low physics water caustics off these are settings that yeah it makes the game look cool like water caustics or light rays light waves like yeah you know it looks cool but i want my fps shadow map resolution <laughs> very low screen space shadows off spot shadow quality low Cache, cache spot shadows on and some of these settings are going to be on and the reason is being i don't know if you experienced this from warzone but it technically gives you a little bit more fps uh spot cache low cache sun shadows on particle lighting high another one of the settings where even though it does affect your pc a little bit it should give you some fps back which is a nice thing and be an inclusion off a drain sucking machine it could make your game look a little better but it's not worth it it will drain your fps and your performance screen space ref reflections off water grid volumes off this is setting up still kind of testing water grid volumes collect weather effects i mean i think it look it's probably just like a cool thing like to see in your screen but it's not necessary so off and video reflex all they see on there has been a lot of talks about on boost and off on is kind of the recommended between all of them even the, though the boost sounds nice so i would just leave it on depth of field off world motion blur make sure you have these settings off it will affect your game weapon motion blur off as well film grain zero you want a game to look clean now for the view section uh your fov i have it on 120 but you can change it you know now the console has an fov slider it's pretty awesome i would recommend 100 to 120 playing too low i mean you just lose that advantage ads feel the view and if you have your F flv high you want this unaffected it's going to make visual recoil almost you know not exist Weapon field of view. Why? This is a new setting that one of the settings I want to talk to you guys about. So this is a completely new thing where your weapon actually has its own FOV. You can make your gun look big, default, or smaller. I prefer smaller, which is wide. It does make a difference. The reason being, one, it looks kind of cool. Two, it gives you more visual on your screen, right? Your weapon blocks a little bit. Now it blocks less. So it's a cool little advantage it doesn't affect ads so when you're adsing it still looks the same as if it was regular vehicle field of view default another big settings change your cameras to 50 percent this is going to cause less shaking aka less visual recoil when you're shooting for audio i play on home theater master volume on 50 dialogue volume on 80 music volume on zero because that thing can be quite annoying uh effects volume 100 hit marker i like it slightly lower 90. now these settings can maybe be a little low depending on what you have at home so if you feel like maybe you want the volume a little higher, then you could obviously up the master volume a little bit, but you're probably not going to need to up it that much. And of course, make sure your auto mix is on home theater. This is going to be a game changer for you. Now let's go to the interface. There's a couple settings here that I want to talk about. One, if you want your mini map to be closer to the middle of your screen, which is a small advantage, you can lower your heads up display. You know, we're going to be putting double 69 here, but it's basically going to be putting it more to the center and into your screen. So you don't have to stretch completely wide. You can do a little quick little glance to see it. Another setting that you may not know existed because it's named differently as telemetry this is basically going to be where you can put your fps your all the counters on your screen you have to obviously put show more 
you see fps counter server latency all these things so if you're wondering where that setting it is it's right here and now for a very cool setting that has been added into mw2 the center dot you're gonna make sure you want this on what is this well let me show you so your center dot is basically the crosshair in the middle but look at this while you're running it has the dot on the middle of the screen so this is going to be good for centering and running around and being on top of your target now there's a lot of talk about in the control section we have the basic controller settings and the advanced one so you're going to want to stick around for this one so for the first setting this is a new and improved setting that this is actually crazy to implement it in mw2 but can you actually change your button layout on your controller so you can make x go to circle circle go to x and this is pretty crazy to think about because usually a modded uh, controller is required or a program on a pc to even do something like this so this is really cool uh if you ever want to change this uh change your, your buttons around or swap something or maybe it'll be more comfortable for you you can obviously do that there uh, i do play on flipped controller vibration off i do recommend a lower sensitivity i always talk about this it's a very quick thing but i'm gonna tell you guys i recommend it's lower sensitivity usually most pro players play between six to eight cents uh usually a 180 s sense around there so i'm right now currently on 77.9 pretty gameplay you're gonna want to have your automatic sprint on automatic tactical sprint this is basically how you had it on warzone and modern warfare where you know you move you're automatically sprinting it's a very op in the game where you have two sprints now for the advanced setting we're gonna have target aim assist on aim assist type default but there is a new setting that was in basically in cold war as well where it's called black ops traditional aim slowdown near target used in black ops game this is could get, potentially give you a little bit more aim assist so if it's something you're interested in you can definitely try it out uh i really recommend dynamic it is a, maybe a little bit of a skill gap initially if you struggle with aim but want you guys to improve and get better with it because it's going to be a big game changer for you once you really master it this is only available in single player so i had this off it kind of was, was messing with me in the campaign ADS sense multiplayer focus one ADS sensitivity transition timing instant you want this on instant this is custom sensitivity you definitely can mess with this i don't really like messing with it because it kind of messes with my aim in my head so i have this on off this is going to be a huge setting input dead zone show more you're going to want to see this bad boy it's a huge list a lot of it's going to be high initially if you do not change this you're probably wondering why your aim or even your movement is kind of bad so left stick minimum i have this on 0.01 .01 for the best reaction time with my stick right stick minimum i have this on the default which is usually 0.05 left stick max i have this a little bit lower so it's my sprint out time so basically my stick will reach full maximum movement speed by the time it hits 80 percent of my stick so basically like let's say i'm sprinting like it doesn't have to go all the way to the end instead it has to reach 80 percent and it's automatically going to reach full maximum movement speed it can help with movement you know you can mess around with this i don't recommend too low because then it's extremely sensitive usually like 0.6 is probably the lowest out of go between 0.6 and 0.8 right stick max i have this on the default 0.99 if you go too low it might help your aim be a little bit more consistent but at range it's gonna suck make sure left trigger and right trigger is on zero tactical sprint behavior i have this on double tap auto move forward off grounded mantle off you don't want to be randomly mantling things that is the worst thing in the world so don't do that ground the mantle off automatic airborne mantle partial uh i you could have this off but this can help with random mantles that becomes a little bit difficult if you have every setting off so i like this on partial and then you want to have automatic ground ground mantle as well off if this video helped you out make sure to like and comment and subscribe while you're at it and we're going to be doing more tip videos so you don't want to miss out thank you for watching